Hi dear students. Uh, today we discuss the theory of ballistic galvanometer. The ballistic galvanometer shortly we say BG. What is the use of this ballistic galvanometer? Today this ballistic galvanometer is a very sensitive instrument used to measure the electric charge. That is, this is used to measure the electric charge in the circuit. Now, first let us discuss what is the principle of this ballistic galvanometer. If we keep a current carrying coil in a magnetic field, there is a current I that you flow along this direction. This is the breadth and this is the length of the coil. This is the direction of the magnetic field. Then the coil experience a torque. That is, there will be a couple of force this direction and another this direction. This equal and opposite force generate a torque on this coil. As a result, this torque will rotate like in this direction. This is a basic working principle of a ballistic galvanometer. That is, a rectangular coil suspended freely in a magnetic field experiences a torque when a current flows through it. You have already learned the equation for the torque that the torque to E C is equal to. If n is the number of turns in the coil, then n, and if a is the area, area is nothing but length into breadth, then n a, then the strength of the magnetic field is b, then b, then if i is the current of flowing through is, then the torque is n a b i. Here the angle between the magnetic field and the current carrying element is theta is equal to 90 degree, therefore sine theta is equal to 1. Therefore, the torque experienced by the loop is N A B I. This is the basic working principle of a ballistic galvanometer. Now, let us go to the construction of ballistic galvanometer. What are the components present in the ballistic galvanometer? Before we go into the construction part, I strongly recommend you to watch the video of the working of a ballistic galvanometer. The link of the video is given in the description box. Okay. I kindly request you to watch that video first and then come to this lecture. Okay. However, I will explain very briefly the working of this galvanometer here. Our main interest is to develop the theory of the working of a ballistic galvanometer. This ballistic galvanometer consists of a torsion head that is shown here in this figure and a phosphorus bronze wire. This, this wire and a, this wire has a torsion coupled, this very small torsion coupled. Fine, then it consists of a mirror. Here, I would like to spend a few minutes to explain uh, how this ballistic galvanometer works. Actually, this ballistic galvanometer consists of an arrangement that is a lamp and scale arrangement. Here, you will have a scale marked zero at the center. Then, if you go to the, goes on the either side of the zero, here it will be marked as 1 centimeter, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, like that. Here, few centimeters will be marked in this direction. Similarly, this side also, few centimeters will be marked. Okay. One lamp arrangement will also be here. The light from the lamp reaches on this mirror. Now, no current is flowing through the circuit, and the light reflected come back and falls on this zero 
position. Now, here you can see the two terminal T1 and G T2. This terminal e is connected to the external circuit. Actually, we are interested to measure the uh, electric charge that is flowing through this external circuit. For this, we connect the external circuit to terminal 1 and 2 and when a current is passed through this circuit that is we just press the key for a few seconds then that current will pass through the circuit for a few seconds and the current reaches here and it goes through this loop and here this is a current carrying loop kept in the magnetic field there will be a magnetic field from north to the south in this magnetic field this coil will experience a torque direction of the force will be along this one therefore the this coil start to rotate then here the mirror attached to this coil will also start to rotate in this direction fine then the light that is reaching on this mirror is reflected back and it will fall on particular point on the scale therefore this deflection theta where you will call a throw a throw is registered on the scale then the spring connected to this arrangement that you will bring back this mirror to the opposite side or to the original position therefore uh, the spot that is appearing here that it will come to this side when the mirror rotates to this side that is here when the spot reaches here you will measure theta 1 when the spot reaches here you will measure it as a theta 2 then the deflection through which the mirror is rotated that is purely depends on how much charge is flowing through this uh, bronze wire that is this bronze wire can twist for a very small angle theta that is the torsion couple is very small and uh, the theta is directly proportional to the amount of charge flowing through this wire in this way we will measure the amount of charge in the circuit that is this is the brief explanation of the working of a ballistic galvanometer fine now let us come back to the uh, picture again next one is a mirror uh, mirror as i mentioned this is to take readings using lamp and the scale arrangement No, here you can see the spring. The spring is used to provide restoring force to the coil. That is, once the, when the current passes through the coil, the mirror will be rotated, and to bring back the mirror, the spring is used. Now we have here the soft iron core. This is nothing but soft iron core. What is the purpose of the soft iron core? That is, that is to concentrate the magnetic field. Now let us go to the working of this ballistic galvanometer. That is very simple. When the charge passes through this coil, suddenly the current produces an impulse on the coil. Therefore, a throw is registered. Is when the current passes, this coil rotate because of the torque. Then a throw will be registered in the uh, scale. Fine. Now, 
uh, what is the theory theory i have already mentioned that is when a current i passes through the rectangular coil then the co uh, if the coil is having the area a and the number of turns capital n and the suspended in the magnetic field b and the coil experiences a torque that torque was tau e is equal to n a b i let me note down that also fine because you have already learned uh, the expression for the, the derivation of the expression for the torque of a current carrying coil placed in a uniform magnetic field that is tau e is equal to n a b i fine let me put this is equation number 1 then if a current flows for a short interval of time dt in the circuit the coil will experience a torque because of the torque an angular impulse will be produced in the coil that angular impulse is given by this expression do d tau how we can calculate that angular impulse for that i would like to draw your attention on the case of the uh, the force and the impulse please we know that the force f can be written as dp by dt we can write the impulse as dp dp is equal to f dt this is nothing but an impulse momentum acting on a very short time is represented by the impulse and in analog to this expression we can write that the impulse in the case of the torque that is tau dt that is a linear force is replaced by rotational force this is called angular impulse That is the angular impulse is nothing by this do t tau. It means if a current flows for a short interval of time dt, the angular impulse produced in the coil that is given by do d tau is equal to. We know the expression for the tau is if the equation one is n a b i dt now in the circuit if the current passes for a t second that is for a particular value of time if the current is flowing through the circuit through the coil then the total angular impulse that is the angular impulse for a time t the can be written as integrate 0 to t tau dt we have to do the integration on the right hand side also for this uh, i take the constant times outside n a b 0 to t i dt here we know the expression for the current that is dq by dt therefore this dq can be written as i dt or if i do the integration i will get total charge q that will be equal to i t fine that is uh, if i modify this equation that is n a b if uh, i is a total current that is constant 0 to t dt the integration then this will be n a b i t this i t is nothing but the the charge q that is flowing through the circuit therefore this can be pronounced n a 
B Q that is zero to T to D to. Due to this angular impulse, a change in angular momentum occurs in the coil. Fine. If you come back to the picture, due to this angular impulse, there is a change in the angular momentum in the coil. That is, the angular momentum in the case of rotational motion is given by L omega. That is, this angular impulse that is 0 to t tau t tau that will be equal to this angular momentum I omega. Fine. That is our next step. Due to this angular impulse, a change in angular momentum occurs in the coil. Fine. What is that angular moment? That is I omega. I omega can be written as N A B Q. It's nothing but this quantity 0 to T 0 to T tau d tau is nothing but I omega. Therefore, we have written I omega is equal to N A B Q. This is equation number 3. And let us put this is equation number 2. Here I is the moment of inertia of the coil and omega is the angular velocity. Fine. Then this change in the angular momentum produces a kinetic energy in the coil. When the coil gets an angular momentum, it will start to rotate. Because of the rotation, there will be a kinetic energy. That the kinetic energy is Ke, kinetic energy of rotation, half I omega square. Fine. That also we have to note on here. That is, this change in angular momentum produces a kinetic energy, half I omega square in the coil. And this kinetic energy that is completely used to test the suspension wire that is this wire through an angle theta. Fine. This is when this mirror rotates, the phosphor bronze also rotate. This phosphor bronze wire is a very sensitive wire and because of this kinetic energy of this coil, this wire also starts to rotate. Therefore, we can write this kinetic energy is completely used to test the suspension wire through an angle theta. If C is the restoring couple per unit test of the suspension wire, this wire, then the work done in twisting the wire through an angle theta is nothing but half c theta square. This half c, c, c theta square will be exactly equal to the 
kinetic energy of the rotation that is half i omega square fine that is if c is the restoring couple for you want to test of the suspension wire then the work done in testing the wire through an angle theta is given by half c theta square that is i can write here half i omega square e c is equal to half c theta square or i can write this as a half half cancel i omega square e c is equal to c theta square let me put this is equation number 4 here if i look back to the equation 3 the equation 3 is this one i omega is equal to n a b q if i square this term this will be i square omega square will be equal to n square a square b square q square and then come to the equation 4 this is i omega square then i write that equation 3 that is squaring that is i square omega square is equal to n square a square b square q square i put this is equation number 5 then i divide equation 5 by 4 therefore this will be i square omega square divided by i omega square is equal to n square a square b square q square divided by c theta square here you have this q square because we are looking for an expression in this form that is q is proportional to theta now somehow we are approaching the our result therefore i can write this q square as q square e is equal to here few times will cancel out this i square and i omega square and omega square now we are left with the q square i c theta square divided by n square b square a square i put this is equation number 6 now if you refer the figure again the this our mirror because of the testing of this phosphor bronze wire or because of the rotation of this coil our spring will bring back the co coil to this original position as a result there will be an oscillation of this coil this and this direction similarly the same oscillation on the this mirror also same oscillation on the phosphorus bronze wire also then the time period of the oscillation of this coil that we have to find out it is but the time period of oscillation of the coil how we can find out the time period of the oscillation of the coil for this let us go back to the equation this equation 4 that is we can use this equation 4 from 
equation 4. What is equation 4? The equation 4 is i omega square e is equal to c theta square. It is i theta dot square e is equal to c theta square because omega is nothing but theta dot. Fine. Then theta dot square can be written as c by i theta square. You can write omega square e is equal to c by i that is omega e is equal to root of c by i. You are well aware that this omega is nothing but 2 pi by t this is the root of c by i and from this you can write the time period t as a 2 pi root of i by c. That is the final result that we have obtained for the time period is t is equal to 2 pi root of i by c. Then from this expression uh, we are interested to and the value of q in terms of the time period. Therefore, we have to replace this i by this time period. If you uh, check this equation, you can write this moment of inertia i as a that is square this equation that is t square is equal to 4 pi square i by c then i is equal to t square c divided by 4 pi square. Let me put this is equation number 7. That is, I, now I replace this i by the equation 7. Therefore, I will write put equation 7 in 6. That is 2 square can be plus t square by c by 4 pi square into that is i have replaced this i by equation 7 then remaining c theta square by n square b square n square c theta square divided by n square b square a square that is this t square c square theta square divided by 4 pi square n square b square a square whenever we can write the q in the square root of this quantity that is t c divided by 2 pi n b a in theta. This is the charge in terms of the throw. Throw means refraction theta. Let me put this is equation number 8. If I take this quantity as k, k is a constant, we call the ballistic constant. You can write q is equal to k theta. Where this k is equal to t c divided by 2 pi and b a. This k is called ballistic constant. Or ballistic reduction factor. From this, if q is called k theta, then one can easily write q is proportional to theta. This, if I replace this proportionality uh, by an equal sign, here constant k is there. That is, this was our aim. Our aim was to derive an equation or develop an equation that should give the charge through the circuit is proportional to the deflection theta. Now let me define 
what is this ballistic constant k uh, we know q is equal to k theta that is k is equal to q by theta this if k is equal to 1 then q will be equal to theta we check back this one k is equal to 1 q is equal to theta fine this we have done here this ballistic constant is defined as the this k is defined as the charge required to produce unit deflection in the galvanometer is the k is defined as the amount of charge required to produce unit deflection in the galvanometer okay let me write the definition here okay while deriving this equation for this uh, q we have assumed that static energy is completely used to test the suspension wire through an angle theta uh, by using that assumption that assumption means to be clear if you can come back to this picture once again that is here if you check this expression there is a the this rotational kinetic energy of this coil that is completely used to test the suspension wire inside this ballistic armometer air is there this is not in vacuum that is in actual practice the motion of this coil that is damped by air resistance here air will be there that is the motion of this coil is damped by the air resistance and the induced current in the coil that is to oppose the air resistance and the induced current in the coil some part of the kinetic energy is already used therefore we can say the some part of this kinetic energy is used to to overcome these two damped fine let me say therefore this expression is not completely true this, this expression is not completely true because we have derived this expression using the assumption, assumption that the whole kinetic energy is used to push to the wire fine therefore some correction is needed in this expression that we will call the correction for damping in ballistic galvanometer that is our next topic fine let me note on all those arguments here for your convenience if we compare to this picture once again we will put it closer in the charge q ne anubadhikamayittla oru deflection alla nammala scale ivide irukku അതായത് ഈ വയറ് ട്വിസ്റ്റ് ചെയ്യാനായിട്ട് ഉപയോഗിക്കുന്ന കൈനറ്റിക് എനർജി കുറച്ച് ഭാഗം ഈ കോയിലിൻ്റെ എയർ റെസിസ്റ്റൻസിനെയും അതേപോലെ ഇൻഡ്യൂസ്ഡ് കറണ്ടിനെയും ഓവർകം ചെയ്യാൻ വേണ്ടിയിട്ട് ഉപയോഗിച്ച് ബാക്കിയുള്ളത് കൈനറ്റിക് എനർജിയെ കൊണ്ടാണ് ഇത് ട്വിസ്റ്റ് ചെയ്യുന്നത് ആ ട്വിസ്റ്റ് മൂലം നമുക്ക് ഇവിടെ കിട്ടുന്ന ഡിഫ്ലക്ഷൻ ആ ഡിഫ്ലക്ഷൻ എന്ന് പറഞ്ഞു കഴിഞ്ഞാൽ ദർ ഈസ് നോട്ട് ആക്ച്വലി പ്രപ്പോസൽ ടു ദിസ് ക്യൂ ദർ ഈസ് നമ്മൾ ഡിറൈവ് ചെയ്തിരിക്കുന്ന ഈ എക്സ്പ്രഷൻ കംപ്ലീറ്റ്ലി ട്രൂ അല്ല therefore the first throw in the galvanometer is smaller than that in the absence of damping hence a correction is required for the first throw okay namaku first throw in the calculation of correction avashyamundu namaku air resistance neyum damping induced current neyum okay and the damping equation okay transfer cheythu kondittulla oru equation aikkanam nammal derive cheyya okay therefore we need a correction let me not on this package here
that therefore the first throw of the galvanometer is smaller than that in the absence of damage. Hence, a correction is required in the first throw. Let the theta 1, theta 2, theta 3 be the successive maximum deflection from the zero position to the right and to the left as shown in the figure that is that is on the scale our the zero our spot that you will move to this direction and you will reach here that it may be theta one and it goes back to this position and it reaches here that will be theta two and again it will come here that will be theta three and again it goes back here and this will be theta four in this way this port will oscillate to and fro about this zero position fine then that theta one theta two theta three with the successive maximum deflections from the zero position to the right and left shown in this figure fine that is let me complete let theta 1, theta 2, theta 3, etc. be the successive maximum deflections from the zero position to the right and left as shown in the figure. If you divide this theta 1 by theta 2 and similarly theta 2 by theta 3, it is found that theta 1 by theta 2 is equal to theta 2 divided by theta 3 is equal to theta 3 divided by theta 4. If you take the ratio of these values, theta 3 divided by theta 4, similar to theta 2 divided by theta 3 similar theta 1 divided by theta 2 and this was found to be a constant value that is the value is represented by d that d is called a damping ratio or we can say this is a decrement That is the decrement per half y pressure. D is called a constant. This decrement per half y pressure. Fine. Let me define that let d is equal to e power lambda then i can write this lambda is equal to natural log d if you take the you can write this if you take the natural log both sides you will get this expression here the lambda this lambda is called logarithmic decrement then for a complete oscillation what is the complete oscillation? Complete oscillation is this one. If you have here zero position, then first it goes to here, this is the theta one, then come back to this position, this is theta two. Now the oscillation is not completed. If you complete is this oscillation goes to this side and reaches here but it will not reach on theta 1 because of the damping effect this will reach here this is theta 3 therefore one complete oscillation is from theta 1 to 
theta 2, 2 theta 2, transpose range is theta 3. Therefore, the ratio of theta 1 divided by theta 3. That is, if I calculate theta 1 by theta 3, this is theta, I can write this as theta 1 by theta 2 into theta 2 divided by theta 3. So, if I divide this theta 2 and theta 2 will cancel, I will get theta 1 theta 3. Same. Thus, theta 1 by theta 3 can be written like this. Then, if you check back, theta 1 by theta 2, theta 1 by theta 2 we have defined here D. Or theta 2 by theta 3 we have defined D. Okay. Therefore, second as D into D. That is, this is equal to D square. Then, once again, if you have this d is nothing but d lambda then d is equal to e power lambda d square means you have to square the right hand side also this will be e power 2 lambda fine that is this can be written as d square is equal to d power 2 lambda this is our equation number 9 Therefore, for one fourth of an oscillation, this is for one complete oscillation, this we have written, then what will be the case for the one fourth of oscillation? For one fourth of the oscillation. Uh, but this is our complete oscillation. One fourth of the oscillation means we have to divide this factor by 4, which will be e power lambda by 2. Fine. That is the, the RHS of equation 9. That will become e power lambda by 2. Fine. Now, let me write theta is the true first throw in the absence of damping. There is the air resistance in the damping on it. Air resistance in the throw on it. Theta in the assumption. Theta is the true first throw in the absence of them theta one is the actual first throw in the presence of dambi that is this theta one is observed after the coil completes a quarter of vibration Then I will define the decrement for theta. Thus, the decrement of theta is given by theta divided by theta 1, which is equal to e power lambda by 2. What is the meaning that if you have written here? The actual first throw in the presence of damping is theta 1. This theta 1 is observed after the coil completes a quarter of vibration. That is for a quarter of vibration. So one fourth of the oscillation is a quarter of the one oscillation, quarter of the vibration. The equation is T e power lambda by 2 that is then if theta is a, the absence of the damping theta 1 is a, the presence of the damping theta by theta 1 is a e power lambda by 2 
that is theta divided by theta 1 is equal to a power lambda by 2 means this is if I use the expansion of e power x power x is equal to 1 plus x goes on square by 2 factor x for x square by 3 factor x etc that is equal the x is smaller than e power x is equal to 1 plus x in similar way if the lambda is smaller the higher order is higher orders of the lambda will go to 0 then it can be written as 1 plus lambda by 2 that is theta by theta 1 can be written as 1 plus lambda by 2 or I can write this as a theta e is equal to theta 1 into 1 plus lambda by 2 this is the correction factor then how do we calculate this lambda that is you can calculate this lambda by observing the first throw theta 1 and the 11 throw theta 11 fine we can calculate this lambda by observing the first throw theta 1 and the 11 throw theta 11 is from experiment after noting down theta 1 and theta 11 then you can write theta 11, 1 divided by theta 11 this is equal to theta 1 by 3 theta 2 into theta 2 by theta 3 into theta 3 by theta 4 and if you do this one finally you will reach theta 9 by theta 10 into theta 10 divided by theta 11 fine then we have already defined theta 1 by theta 2 is nothing but e power lambda and also theta 2 by theta 3 is e power lambda goes on here also e power lambda is e power lambda see all all this e power lambda here you will have 10 lambda this will be e power 10 lambda that is theta 1 divided by theta 11 is equal to e power 10 lambda why we are doing these things actually we have obtained this result if we substitute this result into the expression for the charge that is the theta this is we have derived expression for theta that is theta is equal to theta 1 into 1 plus lambda by 2 and after substituting this value instead of this theta then that is our final expression that is the final expression for the charge which is the dabbing correction so if you use this corrected expression then the lambda is unknown factor that is now we are explaining how to calculate this lambda then that leads to this result theta 1 by theta 11 is equal to e power 10 lambda or 10 lambda is equal to natural log theta 1 divided by theta 11 from this one can easily write lambda is equal to 1 by 10 natural log theta 1 divided by theta 11 if you write this into the normal log this is lambda is equal to 2.303 divided by 10 log that's the e is theta 1 divided by theta 11 that is, in this way you can find out lambda and uh, then the old equation that was equation h character for dumping right just now mentioned is the equation h character for dumping is 
Q is equal to what was the equation H? That was I remember T C divided by 2 pi and B A theta that is now corrected T C by 2 pi and B A instead of theta I can write theta 1 into 1 plus lambda by 2. I am writing another style that is this is T by 2 pi C by and B A theta 1 into 1 plus lambda by 2. This is the final expression for the charge in the ballistic armometer. Now this expression is corrected for damping. So this derivation is quite important in the university examination point of view. Fine, I hope this is clear to you. Thank you very much for watching this lecture.